Thank you. So welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public, here, uh, public meeting on uh, Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. Uh, I'm Jane Wald and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. Uh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting is being conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. Uh, open the town's homepage and on an internet, uh, homepage on an internet browser. Navigate to the town calendar at the bottom of that page. Click on the Historical Commission meeting link. Zoom and telephone connections and the meeting agenda can be found there. Uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time uh, via technological means. In addition, this meeting is being recorded and minutes will be uh, prepared. So now we'll do a roll call uh, attendance uh, tally for members of the commission. Uh, Patricia Off. Present. Catherine Davis. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Becky Lockwood. Present. Janet Marquardt. Present. Hetty Startup is not present. And Jane Wald, I'm present too. Um, the, the public agenda uh, published for this meeting um, uh, was issued without uh, its usual period for public comment, which uh, is ordinarily one of the very last agenda items. So we will, uh, we will hold a, a, a period for public comment as usual. Um, public comment may be made at other points in the agenda as well as um, agenda items. Um, guide us. So uh, when that time comes, if members of the public want to make a, a comment, uh, please click the raise hand button. Uh, if you've joined the Zoom meeting use a, using a telephone, uh, you can just indicate you want to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. So when called on, uh, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished uh, speaking. So residents of the town are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of uh, the commission chair. All right, so um, we move on to the first agenda item, uh, which are announcements, if there are any to be made. Um, I don't have any at this point. All right, anything else from you? Okay, then um, we have guests with us uh, for a presentation uh, about the construction of a permanent band shell on the town common. Um, so we have guests from uh, the Business Improvement District uh, with us who have uh, a presentation. And um, so uh, Ben, if you would promote them and then share screen or power, whatever you've arranged for the presentation. Yeah, well, um, I'll, I'll, uh, Gabrie Gabrielle Gould is here from the um, Amherst Business Improvement District and um, I can give a brief introduction, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have Gabrielle share her screen for the presentation. But um, just to give everyone a, a little bit of background um, and this precedes my time with the town as well. So um, still, still learning. Um, the, there is a proposal to construct a permanent uh, band shell on the town common. Um, and this would be funded by the Amherst Business Improvement District uh, or, and or the Downtown Amherst Foundation, um, which is two similar entities, nonprofits. Um, the, the proposal has been something that's been talked about um, over the years, uh, there's been um, temporary you know, staging put up on the town common for as long as I can remember uh, growing up in Amherst. So there's, and you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a space that can certainly hold um, a lot of people for shows and events downtown. Um, and so we're getting to the point now where discussions have advanced about does there need to be a permanent structure there to kind of make it 
simpler to um, host these events and, and um, which are important for the town. So the bid has taken the lead in putting together uh, plans and a design for Banshaw and I'll let Gabrielle explain that process further. Um, because similar, this is a similar process as the Amherst College wayfinding signs, if you will. The, uh, the town common is the public right of way. So it's not like its own parcel. Um, so it kind of complicates things a little bit in terms of permitting and approvals. So the town council um, has jurisdiction over the, the public right of way um, rather than like say the planning board, for example, um, has, would have jurisdiction if, if the common were like a park, for example. Um, so the town council, uh, Gabrielle and the bid presented to the town council this proposal and now the, they're kind of moving through the, a process of discussing the proposal for the ban shell with various boards and committees. So the design review board has discussed this proposal. Um, Gabrielle is here with us tonight for the historical commission and the DA, the disability access advisory committee has also discussed this proposal. Um, but I think it's important to note, you know, the historical commission is should have a, a is a very important voice when it comes to any changes that come to the town common. It's the most historic landscape uh, in the town, certainly. Um, and so I don't think it should be taken lightly that there's a, a proposal to put a permanent structure on there. Um, and so it should be, you know, looked at carefully and reviewed carefully. Um, and whatever the discussion had tonight. Um, or subsequent conversations about this proposal will then be kind of transmitted to the town council to help them make their recommendation or um, approval uh, for this project. So that's just a little bit of background and I can you know, turn it over to, unless Jane has anything she would like to add, but Gabrielle can then kind of give a bit more background. Um, I think just, I'll, I'll just add that, um... We'll, we'll uh, let Gabrielle go through her entire presentation and then um, just sort of keep track of the comments or questions that um, you have uh, as that goes along. And then we'll, uh, we'll ask, we can then comment or ask Gabrielle for more information. Uh, and our, our end goal here, I think, is to um, be able to contribute to a recommendation of, about it. Is that appropriately stated, Ben? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think that's, okay. that's the right idea. Yeah. All right, okay, thank you. And uh, so thanks, Gabrielle, for, for coming. And let's let's hear about the, the band shell idea. Thank you, thank you all so much for hosting us this evening. Um, I will share my screen in a moment. I would like to just share that we presented this to the town council uh, several months ago. Um, there was a unanimous approval um, for the 12 council members that were in attendance of that meeting to move this forward. We have unanimous support from the design review board on 11-2, uh, the DAAC unanimous support for, and of course, this is when my dog wants to come up the stairs on the 9th of November. And we uh, wrapped with finance committee yesterday for unanimous support to move this forward to TSO, who will be after you. Um, and then TSO will decide to take all of the hopeful recommendations forward to the town council on December 6th. So it's kind of background of where we are. Catherine, unfortunately, has, or fortunately, um, has seen all this before. So Catherine, if you want to zone out, I totally understand. Um, it is a long presentation. I will not read all of it to you, but I will hit some highlights. And if I miss anything, please I, let me know and I'll go back to the slides. So let me share screen. Here we are. Um, I don't know, can I make this? Do I do this? Ah, oh, that's better. Um, so um, the Amherst, the, the Business Improvement District, you all probably know well um, over the years. Um, the entity that you might not know as well is the Downtown Amherst Foundation, which is a foundation, a 501c3 foundation that I founded um, literally right before COVID. Um, we received our 501c3 status from the IRS on the day that Governor Baker put us into shelter in place. 
And in the past 18 months, this has become an organization that raised close to $500,000 to keep our small businesses alive, uh, distribute PPE, and do several other things that um, were pandemic related. We are returning to our core mission, which is to build arts and culture for the Amherst community. So we are the groups bringing you the performance show. Um, I'm Gabrielle Gould, director of both organizations. Uh, John Kuhn um, is the architect and advisor um, on this. He's also the vice president of the Downtown Amherst Foundation. Uh, and Naomi Darling and Ray Mann are the architects who were the winners of the 2008 Bid Band Shell Contest, which we'll touch base on in a moment um, that was before my time here. So um, this is probably the most pertinent slide to this group, um, the history of the South Common. Um, I, I will say I'm a little nervous bringing this up in front of all of you because you are the true historians and I just found what I could um, with our architects and on the Google, but it is our understanding that in the 1870s, in the 1870s, Austin Dickinson brought Frederick Law Olmsted to Amherst to design Amherst College and some of his property and in his spare time, he also decided that he could design what we affectionately call our emerald necklace of Amherst, of all of our beautiful parks, including um, the most recently brought to fruition Kendrick Park. Um, the pictures that we have here, we feel very fortunate to have in um, our historic uh, um, preservation are the sketches of the South Common that Frederick Law Olmsted saw the South Common being perfect for that little black spot right up there on the east side of the common is a performance show. And while the South Common isn't exactly like this, um, that you can see that far left side is now a parking lot. Um, we hope to uh, bring his vision to fruition and to present a permanent performing arts show right there. Um, everybody who has been on the South Common knows that it is sort of a perfect amphitheater. It has that wonderful bowl shape um, that is almost a rake uh, seating that gives incredible visuals to a stage, but it also gives a really nice amphitheater for when you have live performances there. Um, just to give you a little bit of the back uh, story of this process, this was started in 2017 under my predecessor, Sarah LaCour. Uh, this was put to a charrette or a contest, if you will, and it followed the Western Mass American Institute of Architects uh, processes for architectural competitions. It had on it a seven person jury, uh, two were bid board members at the time. We also had a member of the select board, the planning board, the design review board, the historical commission and the town planning department. And there were 15 entries in total. They were given to public comment for several, uh, I, I believe it, it was almost close to two months. They were held in public at the Jones library and the final winners were Naomi Darling and Ray K. Mann. A little bit about our architects are not only are they Amherst residents, which we're very excited about, they are teachers, uh, professors at UMass, and they are incredibly um, uh, just successful and remarkable and wonderful. And one of the things that I have loved about working with them is they really look at their environment and they look at the community and the future and what things can be. So we feel very fortunate to be working with them. And I also like to note that their work up until now has been pro bono and they have just been tireless in their support and their work on this project. I don't think that this bears relevance to your decisions tonight as you were looking at purely historic, but we do like to remind everybody what arts and culture bring to a community, especially something that is free and accessible to all. So here's a small list of what the arts and cultures can bring, but I think that everybody here already is very aware of that. And this is a rendering of our performance show. This is a wood laminate. Um, it will weather with time. It will have a uh, treatment to it that we can easily um, remove graffiti or anything like that. Those are local uh, source stones, whether it be Goshen or another stone source near here. And again, it is 100% ADA accessible and um, community accessible. The bandshell design, as you can see from the architect, was based on folded sheets, uh, origami style. And um, I'll 
let everybody take a look at that for a moment. If you look at the red space on the ground and one of our architects standing in the middle of it, it gives you, it gives you a scope of size for the common. It is actually quite small considering the size of the common. And as you can see, we have placed it very strategically, not only where Mr. Olmsted saw it going, but also to make sure that the integrity of the historic buildings of Amherst College behind it are, are not covered or blocked out. Uh, we have met with Amherst College. They love the location. Then they are very pleased with the design. But this gives you a little bit of a um, actual uh, person to size of common scope. These are renderings. We work with one of the preeminent structural engineers. And what you're seeing is the five steel fingers that will be built underneath the wooden structure and are the structural components to keeping this up. And we have looked at everything from microbursts to heavy snowfall, tornadoes, wind. wind. Um, we've, we've really looked at New England as a whole and have designed something that we can withstand the elements. Just the renderings and the drawings of side view height, what that looks like. You can see those two trees are the current trees that are on the common. So it fits nicely in between them. Structural concept again done by Stillman. And we also have worked with the acoustical engineers to make sure um, our primary concern is that this is acoustically pristine for musicians and players on the stage, whether it be theater or music, we wanted to make sure that the acoustics were accurate to what you need. So it's not only that the audience can hear, but it is so that the musicians and the players can also hear each other. So part of what you're looking at with the structural side of this is what it looks like from an acoustical point of view and how it bounces back to the audience and to the players on the stage. This is a little bit about where we've been. It is no shock to know that our businesses have suffered greatly during the pandemic. This has been a very hard time for all of us. We are looking at opening, we are building and opening a live performance and music venue through the Downtown Amherst Foundation. It will be called the Drake. It will be at what is now, what is formerly known as the second story of the High Horse. We are hoping, hoping to open this February or March and we will be bringing in world renowned music. But what we really also want to do is move into step two. We see this as a phased approach, which is to build and donate the performance shell to the town of Amherst with a a fund for maintenance and a fund for programming. So we'd like to load this for the first couple of years with incredible programming to really show the scope of what it is capable of. And then hopefully the community takes it over and programs it as they see fit. Over the summer, if you did not attend them, we held a four Friday night summer music series. We stopped counting at around somewhere of 575 people. It was beautifully attended. 70% of our attendees had local takeaway, which means our businesses hit their first time in pre-pandemic numbers since the uh, COVID struck our downtown. Uh, so an incredible economic driver for our small businesses and a really, really great gift to our community. And we look at this as we can rebuild. We can come back post-pandemic stronger than we entered into the pandemic. We intend to fully uh, fund this project. We intend to assist in maintaining this project. This was a conversation with the finance committee yesterday. And we intend to work with, at least for the first two years, all of our arts, cultural organizations, as well as the college and the university to program and schedule the talent. It is 100% accessible to all. And we will have sound and lighting that comes in a mobile unit so that we're not adding more structures and more permanent features to the commons. And this is the evening rendering of how this would look as the sunset, which is the view that you'd be looking at from the stage is of the sun setting over the um, western side of South Pleasant Street. And that is the end of our presentation too.
Hey, um, thanks, Gabrielle. That's very informative. Um, um, any any thoughts, comments, or questions from commission members? Yes, Jan. Oh, can't hear you. Sorry, I had it muted. Um, I was on the original jury. Uh, I don't think anyone else from either DRB or Historical Commission who served with me is still on. Um, not to take anything away from Naomi and Ray, but we, this was a really difficult um, task because we didn't feel that we had a rich source of proposals. We didn't feel there were there were many to choose from that were really good. And we picked based on quality of design in and of itself, but there was a robust discussion among all the jury members about the fact that there was no choice that was more suited to the style of the historical environment on the common. Um, they were all very contemporary and, um, well, some were just not even feasible, but there, it, it wasn't like we were given an array of choices to say, let's, let's look at things that might have been typical, say, under Olmsted, or that would match the buildings behind it, or um, we didn't have a whole lot of contemporary ones that we could choose more finely between them. This one seemed like really the only one that really was a, a an interesting and um, visually sophisticated design. At the same time, a lot of people felt that it wasn't viable engineering-wise. And I know you've had studies done, but we felt it might stay up and it might not fall down, but we felt that it could be blown away. It could be lifted up and blown away. And I, you said that you've looked at microbursts and everything else which is stuff that we talked about. And honestly, I feel like those need to be disseminated, the details of those to really, some have people who really know what they're doing look over those. Cause I, I, I still am, I agree with most of the jury members that we felt we were giving this prize to the best entry, but not necessarily thinking would, that that one would ever actually be built. Um, so, Dan, I just like to speak. Sorry, I'd like to speak to that. This isn't an actual, this is not their original design that you voted on. These are the architects that you voted on. And they mm -hmm. took that original concept and brought it to the next level, bringing in architectural integrity and structural engineers to help them rebuild it. And that is why it is different from the first one you saw. Um, sorry, guys. Yeah, it's still based on the same folding paper, the same. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very similar, although I understand that they've gotten more information about the structural version. Yeah, that is what the, the, what I have up on the screen right now was their original entry. Right. And it is it has come a, a quite a long way from there, including, as you can see, the the I hate to use this word, but the bottom heavy, um, well, as you can see it, it. And that is for acoustic, acoustic and structural integrity. Mm hmm. And Philman out of Boston has been working with us on this, on the structural, and Ascentec out of Cambridge has been working with us on the acoustic viability of the show. Well, that's great. I just thought I would report on what the jury thought at the time, which was sort of picking the best of a, of a weak group and then not really knowing whether it could ever be built. I mean, if if they've worked on it considerably and, and they've really um, considered all the problems about engineering, that's great. Um, I don't know, I, I hear from you that DRB, I just went off DRB, so I wasn't at the last meeting um, because I stopped going now, but uh, if they all like the design, that's great. Um, I'm still not entirely convinced that the general Amherst public is gonna like that design on the common in the historical center of town, uh, you know. Robin. Thanks for that, <clears throat> excuse me, that context, Jan. Um, I would 
echo, I think, Jan's sentiment. Um, I'm, I'm, I just came from a class where we talked about um, preservation districts and the risk of never innovating. And um, so I appreciate the need for architectural reach. Um, but I think that, and I, I think I came to the commission maybe after, I'm not sure, I did not, I, somehow I was not, I don't recall this being part of our meetings before with the design in front of us. So um, the incongruity is a little bit, um, I'm just trying to pick a word. Um, yeah, I, I think what the, what Jan said about the fact that there wasn't um, a, a broader selection, but edging maybe more towards um, the existing architecture. Um, so anyway, just um, expressing that. Thanks. Catherine? I don't know if this will help to alleviate any of Jan's concerns, but the design review board with our approval um, discussed having a 90 to 95% review design review before anything moves forward again. So this should include maintenance, engineering, and just the final design. So I think we're still at a place where we've approved this, but before anything moves forward, we need to have a 90 to 95% design review. And then I believe, and I don't wanna speak out of turn, Gabrielle, I, I think it was also that we were going to see a engineering report. Is that correct? I have to ask Maureen on that. We will not be moving forward further with engineering costs and design costs until we know that this is what the town of Amherst really wants to see happen. We just, we, we are at a point where we can't spend any more money on something that could just get shot down. Catherine, are you saying that the concept of a band shell was 95% or this particular design was 95% supported? It, it's a design, before anything moves forward again, our recommendation was that we would have another review, design review. So we'd have a 90 to 95% design review before anything else of this specific design. That was my understanding. And I did see that Maureen sent something today. I have not had an opportunity to review it, but this was my recollection from our previous meeting um, a couple weeks ago. Um, Caprielle, are we, at what phase are you right now? Was this the 50% or are you even, is this even prior to getting 50% drawings? This is, this is the design that we are presenting and would like to move forward with. Um, again, we have worked with the structural engineers and acoustic engineers to make sure that we are ready to move forward. Um, there's a, a lot more steps that have to happen, but after this group, depending on how you proceed, we go to TSO and then TSO will send this to the town council for the final vote as we will be presenting them for the second time. And this, so, this is the this is the fifty percent or is not the fifty percent. This is the fifty percent and probably then some. Okay. Um, what is um, so you've got you've uh, shown us that Silman is involved, but we may not be familiar with uh, Silman and their work. Uh, is that the structural acoustic or what is that? Uh, Silman is structural. Um, please feel free to Google them, everybody. I am not an architect. I don't pretend to be. If, if I had Ray, John, or Naomi here tonight, I gave them the night off um, because they are doing so much. Um, but they are considered, they are um, global, and they are considered some of the best structural engineers coming out of the East Coast. And then the acoustic group that we're working with is again out of Boston as well, um, but they have offices in Europe and New York and LA, et cetera. Okay, um, Ben. Um, I'm happy to defer to Catherine. I just, I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk later. <laughs> Catherine. Hey, I did want to add to this that um, obviously I, was not around on the design review board to see during 
the other designs during the selection process, but I do like this design. But one of my concerns had been that Amherst College would not necessarily like the design. And I, I thought that was something that was alleviated. I think Ben also added that to our packet. Is that correct? In terms of the, the actual design of the, the band shell? Yeah, um, that was my understanding as well. But uh, Gabrielle had a conversation with Amherst College to, and to discuss the design and location of the band shell. Uh, so Jim Brassard serves on both the Downtown Amherst Foundation and the bid boards. He has been uh, privy and brought into every step of this, and he uh, converses regularly with President Martin. And the location and also the modern design is something that they are very, very happy with and 100% supportive of. They were very concerned that we were going to try and present a gazebo or old style band shell that would attempt to fit in with the Porter House or the Boltwood. And they were really hoping that we wouldn't do that um, based on, especially as they are rebuilding, they are going with very modern structures and really looking at how to bring modern architecture into this next century. So they really wanted to see something that was going to be considered a piece of art and sculpture for the downtown. And that's how we look at this, because even if we program this 200 days of the year, at two to three hour intervals, the majority of the time, it is going to be a piece of art that you'll see as you're coming up Route 9 and down and up North and South Pleasant Street. So we're really looking at this as something that is very unique to Amherst. And anybody can throw up a $100,000 gazebo. We could do that. What we're presenting to you is something that is way more um, artistic way more unique and very much more expensive. So, you know, we're, we're looking at this as something that brings Amherst forward as we're all attempting to move forward. Um, ben, did you wanna make a comment? Yeah, not a comment, I guess, just a, a, a discussion point, I guess, if, um, if, uh, if folks are looking for things to, to discuss, I think, um, I think there's some details of the plan that um, still might need to be worked out. And maybe the historical commission could offer some suggestions on the design. I mean, um, part of it is the circulation pattern of the common is changing, I guess. There's uh, trails proposed as part of the, uh, or pathways, I guess, proposed as part of the band shell. So uh, I don't know if Gabrielle, if you had a, uh, uh, an idea of like what materials that might be or um, how that, I guess, connects with the Olmstead plan. But I think that's, when I looked at the plan, that was something that stood out to me is like band shell, but also there's new trail uh, pathways. And I just immediately jumped to what are those gonna look like? What are they gonna be made out of? Um, where do they lead exactly? And, and all of that. Um, so, and if those details are yet to be figured out, maybe this is an opportunity for the Historical Commission to weigh in. Uh, and second off might be trees. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if the plan you're showing reflects the existing trees. I feel like there are more along the Boltwood area, but um, if uh, maybe, maybe if you, if Gabrielle, if you could just comment on what's happening with any of the trees, that would be good. Um, sure, and... Ben, so I'll, I'll start with the trees as, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. As you can see in the, the picture that you're looking at right now, it fits nestled in between the existing trees. We will not be affecting any of the trees on the common. That was an important piece of where we placed this. Uh, as you can see here, there is this pathway. We've thought that the ADA handicapped parking spaces were here. They are not, they are actually right here. Uh, right now, the South Common is completely inaccessible to anybody in a wheelchair, unless they have one that can go on train. As you well know, this is a walked out path, but not an actual path. That's why it has remained on here because it is just something that is walked out. And then we're going to be working with the DPW, Dave Zomick and the town as they design the North Common and are rebuilding the North Common. We will probably look at a path coming from these accessible spaces mm -hmm. here that go to this space here that 
circuit that sort of circumnavigates the front of the stage to the ADA ramps that go up both sides of the stage as part of the, the layout and the plan to make sure that it's ADA accessible to any person who wants to perform um, and also get them to the graph here in a better and more manageable way. Uh, when we are discussing the DPW, et cetera, it is what the DPW and the town decide to do on the North Common that will uh, sort of inform how we're, what we're going to make these paths out of because we're looking at it from an aerial view of continuity. And mm -hmm. if anybody has seen the plans for the North Common, you'll see that there are these beautiful um, arching paths all throughout it. We would like to continue that onto the South Common with the one path that leads to the ADA accessibility of the stage. Again, this path is a worn down walking path that just has sort of become part of the common. The other thing that we're recommending to the town is that this is completely unaccessible. The, the side, there is no sidewalk here, it's sort of a mud path. And ADA compliance would say that this should be a actual sidewalk and walkway for people who park along the side and would like to get anywhere in downtown. So I'd like to comment on a couple of things. Um, one is that I, uh, I accept the, the case that, um, that this is a piece of sculpture, a piece of art it, um, that is um, something, something new and different in design from what we think of as the, as the historic surroundings of the common. So um, it's, it's great that Frederick Law Olmsted drew this plan for the common, but it was never implemented. Um, he drew a lot of plans for Amherst College that were never implemented. Um, he drew plans for the University of Massachusetts that were implemented. Uh, and uh, so there's a, you know, there's a fair amount of Olmsted history in Amherst, but the town common actually is not one of them. So it doesn't bother me at all that um, there's something um, different from 19th century architecture that's going to go onto that, onto the common. Um, I, uh, you know, I'd probably be, I'd probably be among those that would kind of resist a gazebo look because that's it would be um it would be it would be a fake and um so i i um uh, so i'm i'm not opposed to the design and i uh so on your last point gabrielle about um tying in with the north common um i think it's I think it's really important to have some con continuity between the North and South Common, um, partly in materials, but also possibly, and I, I don't know how I feel about this quite yet, but possibly also in the kind of um, density or ratio of, of uh, built features. Now, um, I, I don't want to clutter the South Common, uh, so I don't see, I don't, you know, it's not, I'm not arguing for more stuff there, um, but I, I do kind of wonder about increasing the circulation on the South Common. Um, so I wasn't quite clear about whether the, um, the path proposed from the the northwest corner down toward toward the shell was that was going to be removed in favor of a sidewalk leading from the handicapped spaces at the east end, or would that would the would that sweeping path remain in place? Because I rather like the sweeping path. So we rather like the sweeping path as well as as I, I wish held these up earlier as you can see again this would have this is now parking lot so you can see his original design did have a path coming from what is what i'm assuming it was still south pleasant street way back in the day i honestly have no idea what the roads were called back then but um you know he did have that path so we we did follow through with that 
Mm-hmm. Do with ADA compliance and knowing that these right here are the handicapped parking spaces, we can either propose an additional sweep, you know, and, and even curve it so it matches, um, or we could remove this one. And I think that that is just something that when we get closer to actually breaking ground and committing to this is something we could bring back to all of the powers that be. Yeah. Um, and I, I also wanted to mention that this, the location of this is also very specific to what the common has been used for over the past decade. Um, unfortunately, it's down 80% in its usage for licensed events. So I, I wanna make that clear. We're losing events. We're losing interest in our downtown. We're losing our vitality. And this was a common that was incredibly um, vital and vibrant and it is getting more and more empty and it's not just COVID this was before COVID it was down 60 percent when I was hired from the past 10 years of usage so we're looking at this and the location of this is really about the rotary fair it it, this this complements it it brings a stage that they can actually bring live music to which they'd like to do and it complements the other events here and by that, I mean, what do we have left? We have the 5K run. We have the music that the bid produces. Um, Taste of Amherst is no longer an item. Um, and we're really looking at revitalizing a, a, a central part of our downtown for you know, the greater good, really. Um, are there other questions or comments? Uh, Becky, oh, mute. You're muted. Sorry about that, um, Gabrielle. You mentioned um, not not knowing whether folks would like the design, and I guess I'm I'm thinking about how how does opinion weigh into the the selection. I mean, I remember when the designs were up at the library, and we all got a chance to look at them and vote. But those votes, were they considered when the jury decided? Um, Jan, you might know, but. Yeah, I, I'm going to let Jan step in on this since she was a juror. Yeah, we um, did look at the um, votes. A lot of them were merely pejorative comments. They weren't votes. They were people saying, you know, well, I won't quote, but just. <laughs> really pejorative things about what people had proposed. It was really depressing, most of it. Um, but there were votes, a few honest for, against, you know, where people had done all the numbers and that kind of thing. And um, I think the three highest ones that we had had some of the most votes. So we did consider them. We had to throw a lot out as just irrelevant stuff. You know. Um, so let's see. I'm going to um, invite Pat to comment if you have anything to say. Sure. I I, I reviewed the uh, repo- the presentation before the meeting, and I I I actually have to say I hadn't seen the the plans before tonight, and I was. A, a little um, took a pause at the design, but what it did is it hearkened to me the the Berlin Philharmonic, where where the acoustics are are much of the canter levered um, ceiling, and this brings to mind that and and so if we're talking about a, a music space, a performance space, and we're talking about um, a vision for the present and the future in Amherst while, while um, validating the past, uh, something that's going to promote the arts in a way that's acoustically um, beneficial is something that I can support. And while it seems an unusual design on the South Common, given the historic perspective of the architecture there, on the other hand, it's 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 a present design, and 
as a historic commission, we preserve the past, but we also want to consistently um, maintain the um, the flavor of Amherst, which is which is very much about the arts. And so I don't take exception to it. Um, given all the, that thought process that I went through, I think having a, a, a space for music and the South Common, I'm very much involved in the music world in the Valley. And um, it's important to me that there be venues, but given our past 18 months or however long with COVID, the fact that we could have outdoor venues that people could would be accessible for people and that there would be promotion to have music and other art forms there um, is important to me because the town is, it is, is known by its culture, by its schools, by its architecture, but by its culture. And so music and the arts are important to me. And I, I see this as a present day um, example of how that can be promote, promoted best. Um, Janice, your hand up anew. I just wanted to um, mention that I'm, I'm also on the US as well, or on the design committee for the North Common. Um, Jane and I both serve on that. And although it's been a while before, since anything's been done, I think they're ready to gear up again. And that actually, Gabrielle, will help because it is denser. Um, you know, Jane was saying we don't want to, we want them to coordinate, but not over densify the South. That is the more open one. The North Common has more trees. It also has a 15 foot drop from the Northwest to the Southeast corner. That's going to require a lot of supporting walls and, um, you know, paths that change height and that sort of thing. And then we really want to have benches and there's going to be a seating area with tables. So if a venue and the South Common has good acoustics and there's some music going on there, people will be able to sit and eat up at those tables and be able to hear it. And it should increase the, the space for different kinds of people to stand or sit, grass or table or you know, um, retaining wall or whatever. And it also will encourage people who wanna get out of the sun to come under the trees, to spread out along the double common. So I think that will help a lot too. And in those terms, if we look at the design of the North Common and the kinds of tables, um, umbrellas, retaining walls, benches, then the band shell design starts to connect better. It makes more sense because it has more of that kind of um, almost the breezy tent look that we're gonna get from the umbrellas and the, you know, the more open, simple, um, furniture, if you will, that will populate the North Common. I don't have a problem with the design. I mean, I was one of the ones that voted for it, but I do think that you may get some feedback, some flack from the town based upon the nasty comments we saw in the jury, the voting box, and also the fact that so many people would want a very conventional uh, colonial look on the common. And that's just what I was trying to get across that I'm not sure the town is going to, I mean, Design Review Board has architects on it. Um, you know, many of us are involved in the visual arts. A lot of people in town don't have that kind of training or awareness. So it's just something to brace for if you go with this. So Jane, I have removed myself from all social media because of this and the parking garage. Um, and the comments that are just absolutely reprehensible. Um, what always amazes me, uh, I am now five meetings in on this subject, is who the attendees are, because they are never the people who are hiding behind their keyboards, um, spreading vitriol. So I, I, I sort of have to take a step back and remember that, that you know, we, we do have support for this. Um, we had 15 people ready to come on this night and speak in support. Um, I just was hoping that all of you could get on with your evening early and go to bed <laughs> and not have to hear all of that. Um, but, you know, it, there, there is, I have a hung framed poster on my wall and I'm going to misquote horribly that it is the building of the town building, um, which I believe was built actually as a performance space. And it says something to the lines of you could have all the gold in the world 
the best architects in the century and the artists out of Europe and no one in Amherst could agree on the design of that building. I do not enter into this lightly, nor do the architects, nor does the bid or the DAF, thinking that somehow Amherst is going to come together and actually support something like this. But I can tell you that I've had many musicians come forward and say, do I like the design? Meh. Do I love the idea that I have a place to play? Do I love the idea that children and our community from every socioeconomic background and every uh, religious background and every ethnic background can come forward and have free art for the public. I think we can all get behind that. And one of the most amazing things we saw this summer was over 700 people on the common from newborns in arms to 102 year olds in wheelchairs, every skin color, every background, girls in mini skirts and women in hijabs were dancing and enjoying and eating and living in our downtown Amherst and enjoying every moment of that. And if that's what we can bring as a whole by building something like this and donating it to the town, and if everybody hates it, tear it down in 10 years. <laughs> so we should probably um, begin to wrap up and uh, get on with uh, uh, a recommendation or how we're going, how the Historical Commission is gonna participate in this. Um, but I see Robin has her hand up and perhaps yours can be the, the wrap up comment. I just wanted to make a very brief comment that just that uh, in regard to my former comments, I was not promoting a bandstand or colonial architecture. Just want to go on the record for that. <laughs> Noted, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, so specifically, what, uh, Ben, specifically, what is our, um, our, our, our task, our action item here? So um, a potential action item, and it seems like we're moving in this direction, could be for the Historical Commission to, you know, vote to authorize, I guess, myself and Jane to prepare a memo that um, reflects the conversation from tonight and um, provides a, a recommendation to the, I guess it would be the town council that the commission supports the project. Um, if there are any conditions or follow-up uh, kind of items that you would like to see, um, we could add that into the memo as well, but um, that, I guess that would be the, the action item. Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess maybe my last comment about it is that this, um, this is the design, this is the proposal that's brought to us tonight. So this is, this is what we're discussing and this is where our, uh, where our opinions and recommendations will, will fall. Um, so, um, I think probably our, uh, in a memo, we can note the, um, we can note the comments or the, the, the range of comments. Um, um, I'm a little uncertain what to do with the, uh, with the history part of it, with the, uh, with the charrette and the the jury and the vote there because that's you know that's that's done um, but perhaps some of you have um, some thoughts about that um, I don't think we need I, I was just giving that as background context I don't think it really yeah. needs to come into our discussion I just felt people might want to know yeah, yeah. how we got to that I was representing the commission and the RV at the time. So I just sort of wanted to okay. share that, but I don't think that needs to go into our motion or anything. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Um, Catherine. I'd just like to underscore something that we talked about in the design review board, which is that I would like to put in the memo, I don't know what the right way to put this is, um, a stronger emphasis on maintenance of this structure, because I understand that it is a piece of art, which I actually enjoy. I, I, I conceive of this project in this way, but I want to think about 
the longevity of this, the sustainability of this. And if we're looking at this as something for generations to come, if we're the historical commission of preservation group, I want to know what the maintenance plan could be of this. What, what, and we, we did say this in the design review board. So I, I, something in the memo about that is um, a greater look on the maintenance of the structure. I have a couple concerns still about how this will weather. And um, I mean, I guess that's something we will see as time would tell. If it helps anybody, it, this whole proposal, a shovel will not go in the ground until there is a maintenance fund raised for it. And that is something that we spent a solid hour on in finance committee yesterday. So there will be maintenance fund and there will be maintaining of the structure. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. in our motion we could- Actually, I, I, it's my understanding that it is the first structure ever built in the town of Amherst that will have a maintenance fund. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe um, we could say in our motion that we would like to also monitor the engineering and other reports that the design review board is looking at through our rep, right? I mean, without asking a second time, but the kinds of things the DRB has already asked to see that through her, we could also be apprised of as you move forward. So, so Catherine, I'm agreeing with you, Jan, and I didn't mean to interrupt, but I, I had a question for Catherine and for, sure. for Gabrielle. Um, the it, is the is are the structural engineers also looking at the material, the composition of the materials from which it's built that they will weather, and that they they will um, have some longevity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean that that is their that is their number one. The structural engineers that is their number one focus. Uh, the acoustical engineers are looking at it from a different standpoint. Of course. Of yeah. course. And I think the other concern would be that that it that it really does serve its purpose, that there be a full schedule of cultural activities centered at this location. Um, because it's one thing to build it, it's another thing to have a vision, but there needs to be uh, appointed um, um, artistic um, group that, that will be be hiring and and, and making a program seasonally, so that it, that it gets used, that it, that its purpose is for it, the purpose it's intended. And that is the mission and the vision of the Downtown Amherst Foundation moving forward. So I think we'll need a we'll need a motion that we can vote on, and we have many skilled motion conceivers here. Uh, <laughs> Um, I was just going to briefly, briefly kind of summarize. I've been taking notes. So like some of the sentiments I'm hearing is uh, maintenance is important, obviously. Um, as, as they move forward, think about um, congruity or uh, um, uh, kind of how it relates to the North Common and making sure those, those designs are cohesive together. Um, you know, do, do, do. I think some of the other sentiments are, you know, just generally this a support for an innovative design, if you will, that um, and like while and that you don't think it's going to detract from the historic landscape. Would that be maybe that can be something include something like that? I feel like would be this um, could be included in the memo. I guess. Yeah, actually. Sorry, sorry. I think your, your final comment there, Ben, about support for the innovative design that does not detract from the historic landscape, I think is sort of the core of the motion that we would need. Yeah. I mean, if, if that is in fact what, what you all think, but I'm, I'm not the one that can make the motion, so. <laughs> what about something really simple, like the Historical Commission has reviewed the proposal for a permanent ban shell on the South Common and um, applauds its innovative design, which we do not feel will detract from the surrounding historical environment, a period, but, uh, and, or whatever, nevertheless, whatever mixed up word you want there, 
um, we would like to monitor ongoing um, structural and engineering um, planning and um, maintenance Future, yeah. future maintenance, um, longevity, or something like that. Would would that cover most everything? Well, I, and, that, and that there be a, <laughs> that there be a programming plan. That there really needs to be a group that's in charge of making sure things happen there. Well, the one that's bringing it to us, the foundation, that's what they do. So that's why I didn't put it in there. I mean, that's what Gabriel is saying is this whole thing is happening because there's a foundation that's devoted to programming. But we can say you know, that we'd like to see the foundation continue if this is built or something. Absolutely, to ensure to ensure ongoing programming. Mm -hmm. Okay, to ensure ongoing programming. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, what I'm thinking is your first sentence, Jan, is, a, is the motion, and then the other two items are conditions. Is that? Yeah, that's true. That kind right. of is what it comes down to, yeah. Okay, but, so. So I, I was, however, nevertheless, I, say the caveat. <laughs> right. So I second the motion. Okay, thank you. Um, any the, so the motion is the motion is that the uh, historical commission. I, I'm using your words, Jen. Applauds the innovative design and does not feel like the proposed banshell detracts from the historical land, landscape. Yeah, and then we support ongoing. Um, yes. plans for it yeah right I forgot yes. what the first part of what I said was but that we had yeah. it and support it and then applause the design okay and just to give Gabrielle some uh, guidance do you want to set like a like the DRB said 90 percent design plans that might be a good my like something like uh, that level of specific specificity might help Gabrielle plan for like when to come back to the historical commission rather than just say, monitoring ongoing activities yeah i mean or we could be very specific and say through our rep to the drb we'd like to see what they see um and then what were the things that you the drb didn't bring up um maintenance right catherine or they did I, but they put it we in did office. bring it up and i i think erica brought it up and i also second that it was something that was on my mind and I just want to apologize in advance. I all of you sound like you are underwater. There seems to be an unstable internet connection here, and it's also making me speak unnaturally slow because I can't hear myself. So I'm so sorry. Um, but yes, I we did bring that up, and I and as I said, it was something that was very important to me because I am thinking about. Well, this will be something that maybe a historical commission will think about 2030. So on years from now, so I the maintenance plan is something I think is very important. It wasn't a condition of your motion, like it, the, it is. It's oh, not. Yeah. It's not written as clearly as you are saying it, Jan. But it is. I actually looked at Maureen's um, memo from this afternoon, and it mm -hmm. says, you know, maintenance. I think it said the landscaping, which is also something I brought up thinking about what Ben had said earlier and also the walkway. So it's it's all folded into it. It's just not as clear as what we're saying now. And I think that we could we can do that. Okay. Well, let's let's go ahead and make those points. One, that structural materials that go to the DRB we'd like to monitor too, and that we want to emphasize ongoing maintenance and programming um, in the on in the process be maintained or something. Yeah. Um, do we? Okay. I, th I think that's. I think that's fine. I think everything else that we've talked about are is going to be captured as the in the uh, record of the conversation, like mm -hmm. the consistency with a North Common. That's just in the conversation. That's not a condition. So. Right. Um, I think we have a motion with those two conditions. Two. And it was seconded already. So. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor. Uh, we'll do a, we can do, we can do that, yeah. And I can do a roll call also. Patricia, off. In favor. Um, Robin Fordham. Um, I'm gonna abstain, if that's okay, <laughs> with everyone. <laughs> Catherine Davis. Oh, yes, um, in favor. Becky Lockwood. In favor. Jan Marquardt. In favor. And Jane Wald in favor. 
So, so you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, Gabrielle. Thank you so much. Okay, um, I'm do, going to do a quick time check. 7.38, we're aiming for 8.30. So, um, preservation plan update and historic resource inventory. So we have money from CPA uh, that um, I think was, uh, the interference was mostly um, the pandemic, I think. Um, and, uh, We've gotten the existing preservation plan, the application uh, for the update, um, RFPs and scope of work from a couple of other towns that looked pretty good. Um, and so our, uh, our goal here then is to comment, uh, offer you comments so that we can create an RFP for, um, for our update. Is that Cor correct? Yeah. So I'd like to, I can start putting together like a draft RFP, um, but I was hoping to discuss some of the details uh, at tonight's meeting. Um, I guess I have two, two questions is we have $25,000 for the historic resource inventory, $25,000 for the preservation plan. Um, I guess the historic resource inventory is picking up, you know, an ongoing project. Um, and I think that it's mostly focused on outbuildings throughout the town. Um, however, I think the CPA project, um, it's, it's, I think, vague enough that the, the, that money could be used for inventorying other such uh, buildings. Um, so I guess I'd want, my first question is, um, do we think we should get through a preservation plan update and does that help us inform what we use, what we inventory with that money or is it urgent or do we have enough information now about what needs to be inventory that we can just go ahead and um, go forth with the historic resource inventory or do you think the preservation plan has to happen first to inform um, the inventory and I should say I mean there's no there's going to be CPA funds there year after year so if we use the historic resource inventory money now we could always just get or very likely get more in the future um, so yeah that's I guess question one is kind of about how to phase the two projects Stay tuned. I think I think we need to do outbuildings as soon as possible. I mean, that was proposed a few years ago because we desperately need it a few years before that. I really think we need to get an inventory of outbuildings, particularly barns, before more of them are lost. I, I agree with that, um, particularly because uh, CPA money will continue to, to be available. So there's... Yeah. And it can only help owners of barns who apply for CPA money if they're listed on that inventory, right? To help save them. So it's not just a matter of listing them and forgetting them. It becomes more active um, work to, to keep them if we do that. I think no, I, I agree with that because I think they're more endangered um, in, in a relative way. And I also think the local historic districts are inventorying buildings within their districts for their various purposes. And so for us to do the outbuildings, which might not be the focus of the local historic district as well, um, it, it seems a worthy thing to do, Jen. Okay. There's, a, yeah, lot well, that, of, there's a lot of inventory work to do in the existing preservation plan. and. And there will still be a lot of that to do in the update. So might as okay. well keep going. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, do you think the same consultant could do both? Or are these, I feel like they're separate. Like one is, is, is kind of the, inv obviously inventorying uh, 
outbuildings, which is kind of its own set of work. The other one is working with the historical commission, meeting with town staff, you know, researching town policies and uh, uh, kind of developing the preservation plan. But could they be um, kind of, could there be a, uh, is there a world where they're done by the same person at the same time or should they be separate projects? I think they should be separate. I think okay. they're different skill sets. Yeah, I, I would agree. I feel like uh, I agree. It's probably an architect or some something like that who does the resource inventory. Well, or um, just somebody who's willing to go out into the field and they can't write. Right, right, they write, right. They can't write the right of the paper bag. They have to be yeah. good to be able to write the. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So okay, that makes sense. Um, so. Ben, was there a consultant for the original, the 2003, 2005, whatever the date is on the preservation plan? Was there a consultant for that? It yes. was Lyon. That was, um, yeah, Martha Lyon uh, with another uh, Ge Geisen Tanner Associates out of Natick and Martha and so Lyon. Yeah. Would, would they be worth? going back to for an update or is there somebody who would be recommended in the present? So we, this would have to be um, put out to bid through like a uh, request for proposals process, <laughs> just that's part of public procurement. Um, we could, I, I we could certainly invite Martha Lyon to place a bid on the, mm -hmm. um, on the project and, um, but otherwise, yeah, I guess it would be kind of open open to any consultant. Um, but given their experience working with the town and um, having done the first preservation plan, they might be uniquely qualified to um, to take on the update. But it would but it, be open. It, it requires an RFP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess some of the questions I had were um, so. Uh, there's a few other towns that are undertaking a, or or just finished a preservation plan, um, and their numbers were a little bit higher. Like I think Sudbury was 32, and uh, Beverly was 35, um, and we have 25,000. Granted, ours is an update as opposed to a original uh, preservation plan, so I think there's. A little bit less upfront work per se, um, but I guess like the they don't need to. You know, I'll, I'll, let me just share my screen so we can all look at. Um, I looked at those. You put them in yeah. our materials, and I felt like we have a lot more um, foundation to work on. Than yeah, we, I didn't see it being a problem that it was ten thousand less. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, they don't we. We don't need to recreate Amherst's history. Um, I mean, I'm sure that took a lot of work to write the 10 pages of um, all about Amherst's history and the profile of Amherst and all of that. Um, I think there was there was like survey work done as part of this project and a lot of you know interviews with town staff and public forums. Um, and that that's in my in my experience working with planning consultants like some of the biggest line items are public forums and uh any any surveys that need to be sent out is the amount of hours that go into to planning a public forum and and putting out a survey so um i think we we want the preservation plan to be something that has community input and buy-in that'll certainly help in the future when we're you know pointing to the preservation plan as something to support a project or, or an initiative the more public buy-in it has the easier it'll be to say you know the town supports you know x y x y or z or something like that so i think it's important to have those public forums um, and surveys as part of the project i just worry that it could start adding up um, quickly, but. That's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I won't even tell you what, teaching one course at a university, what you get, um, and yeah. then the hours that go into it. That's, <laughs> that's a 
a lot of income for the, a job that you could be have you can have multiple ones going at a time you know so yeah i think it should be plenty if nobody th if somebody thinks it isn't they don't have to bid yeah yeah exactly and we're it we're uh we're required in in an rfp to state the amount of funding available so they'll know kind of like what they can't go above a certain amount um and so they should do their best to describe their approach and what they're going to do um, at, for the for the plan. Um, so what will, what will the timing be to get the RFP out in this current year or after the first of the year, Ben? What's what's deemed a better uh, sense I of timing? Yeah, I imagine realistically probably after the new year um, to get to get the RFP out. Just, um, it takes a lot to put it all together and then to get it into the procurement um, timeline and and then sure. typ typically it's open for a few weeks and then we have to get the responses back and all that. So well, I'm, um, I'm thinking that people would be more responsive after the first of the year than yeah. they would between now and the first of the year. Yeah, yeah, certainly. So did you... Um... Did you want any more specific comment on the RFPs that you shared with us? Or, or are these, um, is, is your list of questions re really the goal of uh, what, you're, what you're after? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I guess I could have uh, better um, kind of put out some specific questions, but um, I think there's two things. There's kind of the consultant selection and evaluation criteria is an important part of the um, RFP. Like they have to know how how they're being selected. It's not just the lowest bid. It's also they have to. It's the lowest qualified bid, and we have to put forth what the qualifications are. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, is kind of the actual meat of the plan, like what and or, or or the scope of work that we explain. So, you know, we can be as specific as you know we want, you know a meeting with, you know, town manager, you know, historical commission, local historic district, like, you know, we can specify exactly who they need to meet with. We want two public forums. We want a survey townwide. We want, um, you know, I'm just making stuff up at this point, but I guess like um, the, the scope of work could also include like a, a draft table of contents. Um, that we want to include um, and roughly like, for example, like we already have like one of the recommendations, I think it might be good if they start with um, the first preservation plan and kind of pr provide a uh, an overview of that plan, describe kind of what, what has and hasn't been accomplished from then and then kind of like Right. You know, for example, we have two historic districts now. If we didn't have two historic districts uh, when the plan was created in 05. So discussing, you know, the, um, you know, whether there needs to be, whether there are any other districts that should be proposed, um, whether there needs to be changes to the town's bylaws to better preserve Amherst history. Um, so, I don't know. I, I guess it might be easier as a conversation um, if I put together kind of a draft and then have folks respond to it rather than just talking in the abstract, yeah. I guess. So I can work on that for next um, for the next meeting in December. You know, the and current preservation plan is uh, has so many action items in it. Um, yeah, it's a little overwhelming. Yeah. That um, part of a consultant's work maybe um you know a lot of a lot of the work is right there for them because some things have not been accomplished and maybe their approach to it is to to advise us as to whether these are remain the priorities for prison mm -hmm. yeah and there are you know changes on the ground that suggest there are things that are missing mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then for the historic resource inventory, um, that I I haven't looked, but I imagine we have RFPs ready to go from the last time we did uh, the resource inventory. So I can try to dig that up. I haven't looked through the network drive quite yet, but um, essentially I'm looking at the CPA application for this project. It's uh, 60, to, 60 to 80 outbuildings that have been prioritized for in inventory. Um, essentially it's you know getting through the process of developing a form B and then submitting that to the state. The state then often act, asks for revisions and changes. So um, kind of just working through that whole process and then adding them to the towns. I think we have a, the town's GIS system does a good job of tracking um, historic resources. So adding those resources to the town um, mapping as well. Uh, and yeah, hopefully, yeah, by next meeting, I can try to also have a, um, a draft of that as well. I would love to get this, get both of these bid in the winter and then be ready to go for the spring. Um, so yeah, then what was yeah, next on the agenda? Is there, unless there's any other comments. I'm sorry. Other comments on on this agenda item for preservation plan and um, resource inventory. I I think it's a good plan, Ben, for you to put together the RFP. Um, maybe maybe review it with us in case we have any any thoughts about it. But um, to get it out sometime after the first of the year, mm -hmm. and probably the same is true of the inventory RFP. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, next is um, updates on the West Cemetery Headstone restoration. Mm -hmm. oh, did, Dan, did you have your hand up? I'm sorry. Oh, oh we and, do have a hand I, up. I, no, sorry, I don't have my hand up. Okay. Cool. Um, we, have a, yeah, we, have a, we have a hand up in the attendees. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Hilda Greenbaum, would you like to say something on this topic? Yes, I did, because I've been following all of the new zoning things. Well, it's hard to follow them because they keep changing every time there's a meeting and they keep having to have multiple hearings on them. And so don't, nobody really knows what the status is. But one of the, the items is the item to make apartments in the residential village center by right. And the three residential village centers happen to be Pomeroy Lane, the East Street Common and the North Amherst Common up here. And we, are, are, some of us who have been following it very carefully think that maybe you guys haven't been totally informed about the impact that could have on the North Amherst Historic District. So we've, it also about uh, APR farmland, which was also imperiled on Meadow Street. So we've got the North Amherst Common more or less south of Meadow Street and Meadow Street itself that at this point seem to be pretty imperiled. I think Pine Street may be safe from apartments because most of that land is preserved. It's not enough place to put it. But Meadow Street itself, there are enough lots that could be combined there that this could be really a disaster for what were at one point really nice little factory village houses along that street, even though it, it's gone to ruin over the last few years. But I just wanted to bring that up in terms of your preservation planning. Were you aware that these zoning changes are probably going to be pushed through before during this lame duck session before the new council takes its its inauguration in January, and that the East Street Common, particularly, and the North Amherst Common are subject to apartments by right and and the buildings 
torn down because you, there really isn't enough clout in, in your d demolition delay to save things more than a year if somebody's going to make more money by tearing them down. So I just want to bring that up because I wasn't sure whether you know what was going on or not. Okay, thank, thank you, Hilda, for um, bringing that to our attention. And we'll, um, we'll certainly um, try to educate ourselves about it. So thank you. Um, let's see, so we were um, beginning to talk about the West Cemetery restoration update. Yeah, so I just wanted to put that in there as a reminder that the, the, our, the bids for that project are still open. They'll be due back um, on the 23rd, so uh, six days from now on Tuesday of next week. So uh, we should have a, it's similar to the process to what I just described. It's the lowest qualified bidder. So we included um, a set of qualifications that are required at a minimum. So we look for those first and then see who the lowest bidder is for the project and yeah, so I hope to very soon have a contract signed for that and um, $100,000 worth of headstones restored in West Cemetery. Um, and again, that's uh, about 75 in the 1870s section and about uh, 15 of the most uh, uh, problematic uh, headstones in the in the african-american section that are in urgent need of repair um so yeah just wanted to give you a short update on that that's good news thank you yeah yeah um okay so uh updates on the bylaw for uh the bylaw we've been working on for preservation of historically significant structures um it, where is What's it looking like uh, in the ske schedule of town bodies? Then? Yeah, um, so as Hilda alluded to, there are a lot of zoning bylaws moving through the um, uh, uh, process right now. So um, I had been told, and I told you guys this months ago, kind of the, the demo delay bylaws uh, in, in, in the queue, if you will. Um, it's getting closer. Um, I think it's tough because uh, town council, the new town council won't take their seats until the, after the new year. And so we can, um, I think perhaps in December, we could talk with the planning board because the planning board doesn't change uh, with the new year. But it doesn't make sense to talk with the town council until they've um, the new members have taken their seats, and likewise that also meet, uh, trickles down to the various committees of the town council, um, who uh, likely th those members will will change between now and the new year. Um, so, Chris Brestrup, the planning director, did let me know there's a good chance um, we the we could discuss the bylaw with the planning board um, at one of their December meetings. And that would be an opportunity just to uh, get some initial feedback um, on the proposal and uh, kind of give us a sense of whether it's ready to move forward or whether um, there needs to be more kind of more changes made to it. Um, obviously it's been, a long process and it would uh and it's just kind of the, the timing the way it worked out was there was just a lot of a flurry of zoning activities kind of as the pandemic subsided a bit because previously we had been so focused on getting through the pandemic and um as that winded down or is winding down zoning became a priority um and so the the Demo delay bylaw kind of had to fit into the into the queue. So, um, and as you already presented to the planning board, because the PowerPoint that you gave me that I worked with for our presentation to the council was your presentation to the planning board. Right? Yeah, no, yeah, you're correct. So the I have I have presented to the planning board, and unfortunately, the the one time I did, it was like ten thirty at night, and that everyone was tired and um it was just i just felt like it wasn't a really productive conversation 
it was after like three discussing two other zoning bylaws changes and I think Chris and I felt that it would be better to do it at a later date when early in the meeting, preferably. Do they um, really want to hear about it again, though? Is it, was it an inconclusive response from them? Um, I felt like, um, yeah, it, it, it was, I think um, one, one member had a number of questions, and I think she transmitted those to us. Um, but otherwise, it was, there wasn't much feedback one way or another. Um, and was, was that before we had gotten this far with the revision or did this, uh, this particular text that we have tonight? It was pretty close. Um, yeah, I think it was pretty close to what we have now. Yeah. I think the, I tried to, it's, it's a complicated bylaw yeah. for, for, from, for someone from the outside to fully grasp quickly. Um, so I tried to kind of synthesize it down to the essence of the changes that we were making, like, you know, the, the I simplified it even more. Yeah. Yeah. So I really, I really, maybe we should just it. give them the shortest possible version so they don't go like, Oh, not that again. Yeah. No, I think you did a good job of, of really um, narrowing down the presentation. Uh, so, and I, I've mentioned this before, but it, it would be, uh, if I can nail down that date in December with the planning board with some certainty, um, it would be great if members of the commission wanted to join. I think Jane and Jan have volunteered to uh, do part of the presentation. Um, Back when we were younger. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. And, and I'm broken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've both broken something since then. So. Oh, man. <laughs> so I will keep you okay, let in, us know. in the loop. Yeah. What nights of week do they meet? Is it usually the same night of the week? Yeah, they meet on Wednesdays. So, yeah, they're, they're meeting right now, actually. Yeah. Um, again, in this uh, in this version that you've sent us for this meeting, there are, I think, just maybe three places where there's still highlights. Uh, are have are those have have we settled on that language, or or are they still highlighted because we have questions? Um, sorry, I'm just trying to bring it up now. Did I put it in the packet? Mm -hmm. Oh, there it yeah. is, yeah. So, yeah, what I had in here were changes, I guess I made in September um, after we spoke to the town attorney um, and he gave the bylaw a positive mm -hmm. review, but had a few suggestions. Um, so we, at one point we decided to scrap the word structure and just use the word building um, throughout. Uh, but then we also talked about using, um, wanting the bylaw to also to apply to um, architectural features that, in, that could include porches, fences, you know, stone walls, that, that level of detail as well, um, which our town attorney thought was reasonable and something other communities do, but he wanted us to include the word structure as a defined um, word down here, because that does include, you know, a, a, something like a porch or a fence or something like that um, mm. is better defined as a structure, but then, you know, yeah. saying, essentially saying that the word building also includes the definition of the word structure. And that way we can just use the word building throughout the bylaw. So, sorry, I know that was a little confusing, I, I, but um, that's how he felt it would be best to be done. Okay, now that's a good, uh, thank you for that. And so this definition of structure, The, uh, the, the last three words remind me of the kind of crazy definition of structure that was in the original bylaw, mm -hmm. but is this, is this, where does this 
definition come from? This came from the last bylaw, yeah. Okay. I, I'm That's always perplexed by wheels, not including wheels. I, yeah. <laughs> So maybe that's a thing. <laughs> maybe we can, yeah. maybe we can figure could take out those three words off and it would mean exactly the same thing. Yeah, I guess it's like a, an RV that's per, parked there permanently. <laughs> I don't know. But My yeah. image is always just some kind of giant tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it's, it's like those tiny houses that are actually on wheels. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but where do they fall? <laughs> I mean, what if there were some wonderful 19th century gypsy caravan we discovered in the woods? We'd want that to be included. So, so right. take those three words off. <laughs> we could just take the wheels off, whatever it is. And then... <laughs> <laughs> but if we take the three words out, we wouldn't have to go to that trouble. <laughs> yeah. Just depends yeah. on where you want to take the wheels off, I guess. But if it has wheels, they're on the ground. So I think you'd have trouble arguing that something with the wheels was permanently affixed. But I just came out of a historic preservation law class. <laughs> no, you, you're absolutely right, Robin. I was just joking around. That, that, no, I know. Yeah. I was too. <laughs> so this is this is great. We've got a we've got a draft bylaw. Yeah. So the um, finalists to include place, these changes? Though. He's still got this one other place, the 14-day thing. Yeah, that was added after I spoke with the attorney. Uh, I think that's part of the... Mm -hmm. I think we just, we just didn't have anything in there about when we have to file a decision with the town clerk, um, which is pretty standard, so um after within 14 days of the close of the public hearing so generous i mean you, we usually have you tell them the next morning yeah well um filing it now now with the process of creating this demolition authorization oh form, right um yeah. you know it's a you know 14 days yeah so it, it, it can definitely be done but it, uh it, it involves you know creating the form filling it out getting it down to the town clerk's office, stamping it, all of that. Um, so they will be notified immediately, but um, the official decision filed with the town clerk um, will have 14 days to do that. So that's 14 calendar days, because somewhere else in there, we defined days as business days. And I yeah. see above that within 45 days of full application, that must also be calendar days. Yeah, so the, the town's general bylaw uh, uses calendar days um, exclusively. So, uh, so do we I have a definition for, for day up at the top? Maybe we should have a definition for days that it's calendar day, not business day. Um, the, the, town, the town's general bylaw does at the, mm -hmm. for the entire thing, but. We're separating. From that, right? Oh, we're, no, we're moving. The we're zoning moving. bylaw will be yeah. in there. Okay. Yeah. This as long as we're consistent throughout, because I thought there was one place where we did have business days. So we should. Yeah, I'm, I'll I'll double check, but I, I am pretty sure I I, I went through out. and removed okay. the, the business. Okay. <laughs> days, so okay. I've this note has been in here for as long as I can remember, but um, I need to find I need to find where the general bylaw discusses penalties um, and they have a specific reference. So uh, I will <laughs> change that reference. Okay. And we'll have a clean copy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Super. Okay. Great. Um, all right, then we have <clears throat> any unanticipated items, if there, if there are any. I don't think so. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> if we check out, do we have a meeting date? Well, we do. Uh, we have one more thing, uh, and that is um, it, we need to offer public comment. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, 
Um, I guess I, I did have one out on the anticipated item. Um, and just, I guess, uh, if I can act as the liaison from the local historic district commission, um, the, the local historic district commission is currently reviewing a project for the construction of a, of a townhouse development um, at the corner of Sunset and Fearing Street. So it's across the street from Southwest dormitories and across the street, across Sunset Avenue from what's called the Creamery Building. It's like a brick building that used to have Sunset Pizza in there. So it's at that corner. Um, there are two mid 20th century homes that are proposed to be demolished as part of that um, project, demolished or relocated. Um, this is a Barry Roberts project. So um, he's in, uh, intent on re relocating the homes. Um, this will come before the Historical Commission probably in one or two months, but it's gonna go through the local historic district first um, to kind of get approval for the uh, relocation and or demolition of the homes and for the approval of the subsequent construction if they if they if they choose to. Um, so I guess I just wanted to give you a little bit, you know, their public hearings are posted on the town's calendar. The 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 first uh, public hearing was continued until this until December 6th because they hadn't um, they wanted to see some changes made to the site plan. Uh, for the townhouse project to kind of better fit with the historic character of the neighborhood. Um, so yes, just wanted to provide what are the, the houses. It doesn't concern us because the houses are too new. No, uh, they they do concern they do. the right. historical commission. Um, they will need to file a demolition application, um, but I think they want to get through the local historic district process first, okay. and then come to the historical commission. It's it's 1923 and 1943, oh. I think, for the homes, but they do, they, they have, yeah. And I actually, yeah, so, uh, and they actually ahead. came before us a, a, a couple months ago just to give us a heads up that this was um, proposed. I don't remember that. Yeah, they did. I see a visual to remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so demolition it isn't considered a, applicability and I guess I don't quite understand how the local historic district no they they doesn't... can they, they can uh say no to demolition um they can okay they, they can have... say no and then but if they say yes we can also say no yes yeah, so is that, is that yeah I'm just so trying they... to understand how it works I've never no it's a good question I've I've they they could approve the demolition um and the, i think the historical commission could put still put a one-year delay on the on the demolition okay but they would speak to the appropriateness of the plan the new architecture the Correct, local yeah. yeah yeah but the the demolition is also an issue of appropriateness so mm -hmm. of course we'll find, yeah. yeah so they could they're if they, uh, if they did not approve demolition, then that's effectively stopping the project. Correct. Until yeah. There is a better yeah. plan. Yeah. They're before us, so then it wouldn't come to us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, if you're interested, you can go to the local historic district website on the town's page and go to the packets. Um, and the information will, will be in, in there for the, I guess they just met on Monday. So it's the November 15th meeting where there's some visuals in there. Um, and then again, the meeting was continued till December 6th. So that is my unanticipated item. <laughs> I, I guess this is an, ex, an excuse, I could use unanticipated items as an excuse to, um, thank Ben for planning the Riders Walk launch and it was oh, yeah. very nicely attended and thank Jan yeah. for leading the <laughs> leading the the uh, unveiling and um, providing so much great uh, information about the process and thanks to all who came to support it so so I second Jane it was well executed Ben and Jan your remarks were wonderful 
um, to the point, you know, captured captured the spirit of the walk, and it was fairly well attended given given everything. It was a nice day. Yeah, I've handed out lots of the cards to a lot of people who want to do the walk. So yeah, and um, I didn't see the full article because it, it has a paywall, but I saw a headline in the Boston Globe that yeah, they... and they misquoted me again. Oh. <laughs> no. Yeah, it goes on and on. I mean, we are now committed through misquotes to doing two more walks. <laughs> <laughs> Led by you. Yeah. yeah. Somebody want to take that on? Feel free. Yeah. No. Well, anyway, it was very, it was very nice, and uh, so the the walk is launched. It was fun. Yeah, I'm very happy. Now, if we get the bylaws done, gosh. I won't know what to do. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing thing. So let me um, uh, ask Hilda, as the only non-panelist uh, left in the room, if, if she would like to make a public comment. Yeah, uh, I have a question for you. Since I'm writing this up for the indie.org, um, and I haven't done it in a while, you've got two new members. And if somebody each of them might be willing to write me a couple of sentences at greenbomb.umass.edu. I would like to write something in my article about what the two new members can contribute to the commission if they would be willing to do that like tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> or before you go to bed tonight, in other words. Yeah. <laughs> well, All I'll right. work. I won't send it in right away tomorrow, sometime tomorrow. I'll wait, I'll wait for it until somebody says, give up, lady. Um, I think I, I, they did. I think Catherine and Becky did submit short little bios as part of the uh, um, yeah. Can you send it to me, Ben, if you've I, got it? I think I can find that. Yeah, yeah. OK, great. Better for Ben. To stay I think up. it might be nice when they're new people and every, everybody's locked at home to, and they're changed for the, for the sake of transparency. <laughs> in government to say who the new, new members are and what they do. Thank sure. you, I appreciate that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, so, uh, a next meeting date. Well, we don't wanna do it on Wednesday again, right? Because of the possibility of planning board. Um, planning board in December. Correct, yeah. I do. They're meeting today, so that tonight, so they meet every two weeks. So I guess they're meeting on the first, and then probably the fifteenth. Um, so maybe we should avoid those dates. Oh, yeah. The fifteenth would have been our date, so maybe the eighth. I can't do the eighth. I was reserved. I was reserving the fifteenth, but I can't, cannot do the eighth. 20 seconds, awful close to Christmas. How about yeah. uh, the, the 14th or the 16th? Oh, the, the 7th I or the 9th? Or, or the 7th or the 9th during, during that week? 13th, maybe? I could do the 13th. Jane, Catherine, Becky? Um, Is that a Monday? I could do the 13th, yeah. I'm, I'm going to quickly check out my schedule. Um, and I just might have to get back to you on it. I have a lot of night meetings. <laughs> what, about, what about the 9th through the 16th? Does that work? I, I'm friend? sorry, what? You, uh, the 9th through the 16th. It's a Thursday. I Thursday. Do the 16th. Okay. Maybe the 9th. I'll be brain dead. The ninth is challenging for me. I'm usually driving on Thursday nights. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. Want to send a doodle, yeah. Ben? So is the seventh the Tuesday of that week? Well, same problem. I I'll can't. get home just as this would start. It, oh, okay. I could do the sixteenth. I would. I look at it right now, but all of those other nights. Um, are already booked for me. I have Wednesday. Yeah. Um, 
Wow. I can see what I can move. I, I, my December is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. to be transparent but you if you what know obviously you know, I I actually <laughs> I am out of town the 20th um I, I, start going right I think doodle about uh, that before. move around yeah I think I have to doodle okay and I'll confirm the uh plan okay. for date um I mean it, it, honestly it could be the we could just wait until January to talk to the planning board and have our uh meeting on the 15th as well. How, how much, how crucial, how much more crucial is it that we meet than that we talk to the planning board in time? I mean, do we need a meeting desperately in December? Maybe we should just wait till January. Yeah, I mean, I could, um, once I have the RFPs developed, I could send those out for a comment um, via email. Um, yeah. Uh, we just have to be careful that, you know, it would have to be com comments directed back to me rather than within the group um, for the public meeting stuff. Because uh, our uh, major thing that we're moving on right now is trying to get the bylaws finished. And yeah. if we can move that forward with the planning board, that's a major agenda item. Yeah. That's much else, you know, unless something comes up from outside. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't heard of any demo projects coming uh, in the near future. The, the the sunset clearing project is probably a, a, a few months out from a okay. demo That's delay hearing. But yeah. All right. Good. Let's wait till January. Works for me. Okay. Yeah, if anything else come. Yeah. That's good. Okay, third Wednesday in January so is, that is the 19th. So yeah. Catherine, do things slow down for you in January at all? I mean, nothing ever slows down. <laughs> but I, 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 if we have our regular meeting date, then I can accommodate for that. I just, December is fully booked, basically. For me. I don't have a lot of wiggle room, but I, I can try. We've been trying to do the third Wednesday. So maybe, you know, if we go, go back to that. And yeah. we've been pretty, pretty good about keeping to that. It's just... Yeah, since we aren't meeting in December, maybe meet on like the second Wednesday just to be a little closer and stuff comes up. I don't know. Yeah. Sure. That'd be the 12th. I'm okay, okay with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I could meet the 12th. It's a short month. So, because there's only four Wednesdays instead of five. So, okay. okay. I think for me. We've got a solution, so we, um, I guess we just have to hang out for five more minutes. Or <laughs> I can that we adjourn. I second. I second. Hey. Bye, Jane. Bye. Love visiting with you. Good night, everybody. Bye. All right. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you so Adjourned. much. Happy Thanksgiving. Good, <laughs> yeah, good travels, everybody. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>